This is Math 152. We are going to work on section 3.1. This is the first part of the lecture. It's integration by parts. And we already know how to integrate using uh, substitution. Um, and when we do substitution, we're really undoing the chain rule. And uh, so integration by parts, um, you can think of it as a tool that we could use to undo the product rule. So how do we get there? So I'm going to do a little manipulation right now that's going to show you um, that's going to show you how um, how we could build this up, where, where the rule comes from, and then we'll practice using the rule. So if I have some functions multiplied multiply together, f times g, say, and I take its derivative. So one of the things you know is if I take that derivative, I use a product rule for that. So product rule, I just think of it as derivative of the first one times the second one, plus the first one times derivative, derivative of the second one. I'm going to do a little fancy footwork here, and I'm going to integrate both sides of this equation. I'm just going to go integral of this side, integral of this side. Is the integral of the derivative drops out, so we've basically got f times g. And then what we've got is, uh, well, since this is addition, we've basically got the integral of the first one plus the integral of the second one. This doesn't seem to get us too far, but here is here's the trick that we're going to do. We're going to isolate this term right here, so we're going to subtract. Uh, this one from both sides and we could go we could go either either route so basically i'm going to subtract the integral of this from both sides so here it's gone so let me rewrite what i have the integral of f times g prime so notice that's the integral of a function times the other function's derivative is equal to the two functions multiplied together minus the integral of the first one, uh, the derivative of the integral of the first one times the second. Instead of using f and g's, uh, this often gets gets written as this. Uh, the derivative of a function, this would be f in this case, and then the derivative of that one. Um, so we're just going to say uh, u is, is f and v is g in this case. And so we could talk about the derivative of g as being like db, right? Derivative of b. And then that's going to be equal to them multiplied together minus the derivative of u. Or we could say that that is du, the derivative of u times v. This is it. So what I can do is I can do some substitution to get there. And notice when we, when we think of this kind of rule, um, we have these two functions, but we're, we're saying we're taking the derivative of two things. The first one's a function. The second piece of it, we'll just say, is the derivative of the other function. So here's, here's an example. Let's keep that where we can see it. I want to take this integral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some substitution. I'm going to let the, the first piece, this x piece, be u, and I'm going to let the second piece, sine x of dx, be d. Okay, so let me grab uh, some other pieces here. So that means the derivative of u, derivative of x is just 1, dx, so we'll say that. And the antiderivative of sine x dx is negative cosine. And this u prime right here, I'm going to doctor this up a little bit so that this is going to say, just to match. Uh, match our notation down here. So now notice what I have is I'm, I've said um, x is u and sine x dx is the derivative of v. Well, this has to be equal to u times v. Well, I know that u is x and v would be negative cosine of x. So that's negative x times cosine of x minus the integral. Notice it's of v times the derivative of u which is just dx. So it's negative cosine of x. And notice this gives me my dx. And that's great. So minus cosine, I'm going to take that negative out of there. And the integral of cosine, the antiderivative is sine. So this would be negative x cosine x plus sine x. There we go. Now, if I was not sure about this answer, I could take the derivative of this 
And if you take the derivative of that, you're going to get that back, the antiderivative. So here's what I want you to notice. We think about breaking up what's inside our integral into um, a function and the derivative of another function. Picked our pieces. We'll talk about ways to pick up those pieces. And then we're like, okay, well, if u is x uh, dv, derivative of v is sine x dx, then we know what du has to be. We know what v has to be. And then we can just substitute them into those spots right there. That's pretty great. All right, let's do a couple more. So we're going to take the integral of x times e uh, to the 2x dx. And we're going to integrate by parts here. So remember, the strategy is to break this up into pieces, one of the pieces being u, the other piece being derivative of dv. So uh, let's see. We'll let uh, u be x. You know, and again, I haven't talked about how to make these choices. We will talk about that in a minute. I just want to do mechanics here. And so then dv will be the rest of it, e2x dx. Great. And notice I need that dx in there because I'm going to find v. I'm going to take the antiderivative of this. And, uh, well, derivative of u, that's the derivative of x is 1, so it's 1 dx. And then e to the 2x, it's antiderivative. I know that that's its own. E is its own um, derivative, and you can do a little substitution, figure it out. Hopefully, you can see pretty readily that it's that. Again, what we're doing is the antiderivative of e to the 2x dx to get this. And if you wanted to you know, do substitution, let u be 2 to 2x, you, you'll get here. Notice what we said was this part is just u, and this part is the derivative at v. So it must equal u times v, so 1 half x e to the 2x, minus the integral of v du. So this times that. Pull that 1 half out of there, just so it's out of the way. And actually, this antiderivative I've already done here. So I know that the... the uh, the integral of this is one half that, so which makes this a one fourth plus c. There it is. Now this way, like I said, how do I choose which one's u and which one's dv? So uh, your book has a nice little kind of rule of thumb. It's not a definitive rule, but it's a good uh, way to think about it. This is like right after checkpoint 3.1 in your book. Throw it in here. So how do we choose U and V? And they give us this, uh, this acronym, this mnemonic device to remember. Zoom in a little bit. Now, this doesn't always work. It's a, it, it helps us make a pretty good first choice. Kind of like what's your first your first bet to go with and so first off we'll try uh u to be a log if we have a log we'll take it if it inverse trig we'll take it then algebra then trig then exponential so just looking at the one that we just did uh we have this e to the x that's an exponential and x itself is algebraic so we took the algebraic choice before the trig choice so let's take a peek at this next one then we have um, this integral, and it's natural log of x over one third uh, d to the x uh, dx. Sorry, and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna think of this as the integral of x to the negative three times the natural log of x. And so notice I have an algebraic piece and a logarithmic piece. And this little rule of thumb tells me if you have a log, try it as u. So we will do that. So u is natural log of x and notice i'm picking my u and my dv that's the rest of it so i want to remember that i have all this as well i'm just going to move this over okay so if u is the natural log of x I'm going to take its derivative which is one over x And the antiderivative anti -derivative of uh, x to the negative 3, well, let's see, that exponent would decrease, uh, increase by 1, and then I'd have to compensate for it. 
So we have a negative one half. Great. So there's my pieces. So again, I'm saying u, this, this first part, this part of the function, the ln is u, and the rest of it is dv. So that means that this should be equal to um, u times v. So negative one half x to the negative two natural log of x minus the integral of v times du, v times du. So that would be, let me clean this up a little bit. Uh, this is basically, that x to the negative two, that's like one over x squared, right? So that means, That should be equivalent to that. And I've got some pieces in here. I'm going to take that constant negative one half out of there. So if we do this integral here, then combine up those fractions. I could leave it like this, or I could deal with those negative exponents and write this. There it is. Here's our basic idea. And what I want you to uh, to see now are some things where uh, things get a little, they can get a little uh, tricky on us. Sometimes it's like nested, embedded in itself. All right, so there's our integral. And I see that I have an algebraic and a logarithmic uh, function in here. So I'm going to let you be the one that's algebraic. So again, notice that I've let you be that part and dv be that part. Derivative of u is this v, and I'm taking the antiderivative of e to the 3x, right? I'm, I'm doing this to get there. And you could do some uh, substitution to get there. Uh, maybe you'll maybe you'll just see it, but it does it is this. All right, so now that we have all these pieces, we know that this is equal to uh, u times v, so x squared times that minus the integral of v times du, so this times this. So two two x times one third. I'm going to write that as two thirds x. All right, so now I get to this point and uh, things are looking okay, I guess. <laughs> um, but what I notice is this is gonna be hard to do. So I'm actually gonna do uh, integration by parts again with this one. Let me clean this up. I'll pull that two thirds out of there. And I will break this up again. Algebraic logarithmic, so I'm gonna let u equal x, dv equal e to the 3x dx. Well, I know the derivative of u is 1 dx. And I've already done this antiderivative back here. So I know that it is 1 third e to the 3x. Cool. So here's, we, you have to really keep track of pieces. So I have this first part, this 1 third x squared e to the 3x minus, and now notice it's minus 2 thirds times that whole thing, right? I'm just taking the integral of this. So there's gonna be a two thirds connected to each of the pieces, right? If this whole thing's times two thirds, there'll be a two thirds here and a two thirds here. So I'm just gonna write that down and remember it. Uh, so uv, so I'll write this as one third times x e to the three x. And notice also, uh, let me keep those parentheses there for now, minus, cause you gotta keep track of the negative going into there as well, Integral of v du, so one third e to the three x dx. So you could you could maybe you know you can sit on this and distribute that negative two thirds in um, later. I don't I don't have a preference for what you do. I don't know that one way is better than the other. I'm just going to do it now. So I multiply this in here, negative two ninths, and this will be a plus. And I've got a two thirds coming in here, and I've got a one third uh, that I am going to pull out. So these get multiplied together. So another two ninths integral e to the three x. 
dx. Again, what I did here is I, I took this negative two thirds, distributed it to this term, distributed it to this term, making this positive, and pulled out that constant. Who we? All right, one more piece then. Take this integral right here, which we've done uh, several times in this problem. And so that is one third e to the three x. Notice that's still multiplied by this two ninths that's right here. And then we've got all the rest of it as well. So instead of writing it, I'm just going to do this real quick. Uh, 2 27ths e to the 3x, and then the rest of it. So, oh, I missed an x there. Plus the constant. Wait. What I'm, I'm hoping that you'll notice is we kind of worked... We had to work to peel away at this x squared, right? Like we we had it and then we took its derivative and that made it just a 2x, just a single x. And then we had to do it again. And this like going back and forth between these two representations, we had to do a bunch of times, but it was really about peeling away that x squared, peeling it down into pieces. All right, here's another example. I think this one is super clever. So I have uh, algebraic exponential. So I'm going to let u be that, that algebraic part. dv be the rest of it. And let's see, derivative of u is going to be 3t squared dt. And now v is going to give me grief. Like if I try to take the antiderivative of this, I could do substitution, right? So u equals t squared but du equals 2t dt. I don't have a t in here. Oh, so I'm going to have to be clever about this. I do have, I could have a t in here if I broke this up. Again, this is a clever, sneaky problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of u as t squared, and that leaves me an extra t, right? Like I could think of this as t squared times t. So dv can equal that. So then now I can take um, the antiderivative of this. I can take the integral of this. And this type of thinking, you have to do some creative thinking in these um, sometimes, really to see the pieces. So derivative of this is 2t dt. And now if I do this, again, let me just do this with a little bit, a little side work, a little substitution. So that means that... I only have a t, I don't have a 2t, so 1 half du is t dt. Okay, so that means that this would be 1 half, well, here, let me do this. Integral of e to anything is itself, so 1 half equals that, but u was t squared, so it's 1 half e to the t squared. So notice that I had to be a little clever so I could do this. And even in doing this, I had to do a little side work on it, right? There's going to be a lot of nested um, integral work on these problems. And I'm not even close to done <laughs> because now I just identified u and dv. And so then now this is equal to u times v. So t squared, one half, t squared e t squared minus the integral of v du. So v du, these two. So this is going to be 2 times a half is 1 t dt squared dt. And now to do this integral, I've actually already done it. Um, that won't always happen, but if I didn't realize that I'd already done it, look right here, right? I would use just substitution for it. Not, not integration by parts. So the integral of this is that. So our answer is going to be minus this plus our constant. Whew, so good. All right, uh, I'm going to do a couple more examples for you here. And again, they're all pretty darn, pretty darn clever. Here's one to get used to. 
So since I only have one function really here that I see, it's natural log of x. So natural log. So I'm going to let u equal that. So if u uh, equals natural log of x, that means that uh, dv is just going to equal basically 1 times dx or just dx. So derivative of this is 1 over x dx. And then the antiderivative of this is x. So, so this equals uv, so x times natural log of x, minus the integral of v times du. x times 1 over x, that's just 1 dx. So the integral of that is, is just x, so x natural log of x minus x. You'll sometimes written this, this, see this written this way as well, where uh, they factor an x out right both things so it's a good thing to uh to remember and to know so we've got the integral of sine of natural log of dx so these are not multiplied together the uh, natural log is being inputted into sine of x so i can't i can't separate these out so actually i what i have is just the function and then i have a dx and then I have a times one. So this is a case where I'm going to let uh, my dv be just be one dx, and the function be the rest of it. So uh, I'm going to take the derivative of u, and that's going to be a chain rule. Uh, the derivative of sine is cosine. And then now that I've done the derivative of co of sine, I do the derivative of what's in there, natural log of x, which is one over x. Cool. And then the antiderivative of d of x is x. So I've got my u and my v. And in this case, u was sine natural log of x, dv was dx. So this is equal to u times v, uh, x times sine of natural log of x, minus the integral of v times, whoops, du, sorry about that. And I notice I've got a 1 over x times an x, so those are gone. Right, those are just a one, leaving me cosine of natural log of x dx. And I don't feel like I've actually gotten very far uh, because I've just got another problem like this to deal with. Um, okay, well, let's deal with it. It's it's kind of like what I did before here. So I'll do integration by parts again on this. So u is going to be cosine uh, natural x the function dv will be 1 times d of x antiderivative of that is this if i take the derivative of u chain rule again derivative of cosine it's negative sine of what's in there times the derivative of what's in uh, the derivative of what's in there which is 1 over x dx i've got this part x sine minus and notice I'm, I'm subtracting the whole thing like what this breaks into gets subtracted so u times v so x times cosine natural log of x minus uh, the integral of v du so v d x times one over x is one well this is looking familiar negative sine of natural log of x dx. So let's distribute that negative into there. So it goes here, and then it also goes here, which makes that positive. But then this negative can come out, man, making it negative. And look, I'm back where I'm started. So if I'm crazy, I just keep doing this forever, and I get this big expansion that just keeps on going and never get out of it. But I can be a little clever. Remember, this is equal to that, right? So this is equal to that. And this is what I'm solving for. I want that all alone. So since I have it on both sides, I'm going to move this over to that side. In other words, I'm going to add this to both sides of this equation. And if I add them together, that just means I have two of them. And if I have two of them, I could divide both sides by 2, 
in order to solve for this to get this integral that I'm trying to solve for along. Uh, so divide by two or multiply both sides by half, same thing. And there's our answer. So um, if you get your original integral back, stop. <laughs> and then you can move it over to the other side and divide out and to keep it solved for that. All right, are you still with me? Uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one more example. Now, actually, not even do the whole problem. I'm just going to set it up. But you know, I might, I might clean this up a little bit first. Um, in other words, like that's really, really kind of messy. You could do a little substitution. You could like let you, or or maybe let's use. You can use anything you want. You can use a. You can use whatever. Um, but let's do substitution, not integration by parts, but substitution. Let u equals two x plus one. So du equals 2dx. So if I do my substitution into this, notice it would be the integral of the natural log of u one half du. And you can take the one half out. And maybe like then integrate part parts from there. And it might save you a little bit of work. If the u's and the um, v's start to get confusing for you because we use u both for integration part parts and for substitution you know it might help you just do it just use an a instead of a u you know just use just use another uh, another variable <laughs> i made the l into an a uh, just use another variable to go all right these problems um they're it's beautiful and it's not it's not easy it, it it's a real like kind of canon of work. So take your time, do the practice, and uh, send me any questions that you have. Post them in the forum or send them to me.